Hi guys and welcome back to episode 15 of my Madden 17 Road to Glory and as you can see in the top right we have once again got a few more coins from doing the solos and um, Ultima Freeze is out at the moment I know this video is a little bit late I did actually have this bit recorded but the footage did get corrupted so I've had to re-record the first bit but luckily the footage of the games didn't so fortunately for me that saves me a hell of a lot of time on re-recording the games but what did happen in the games is we did end up off, off camera this is anyway um, actually I'm not going to show you right now what happened in the games I'll leave that to the end of the episode so you can see in the top right 91 overall on the team I think it was 90 overall before but we did make a few changes so we got a few team hero players in we got the 88 Stafford who's an 89 with the chemistry who he's very good i mean stafford's now got a new card out in ultimate freeze so i'll potentially be picking that up at some point but as you can see in the stats on the bottom left his throwing deep is so accurate with 95 throw power and 91 accuracy that's ridiculous also rolling out he's not too bad either like i know he's not known for being immobile but he's also not known for being a mobile qb he does very well for me i mean his passing, the main reason I got him in there is just pocket passing presence, which he is very good at. And that is, to be honest, that is the main reason I have him there. Also, another addition in the team. I think we got three three to five new additions. I can't exactly remember. We, we got, excuse the pronunciation of this, Oluwale, I think it is, from the Raiders there. Uh, we did have Patrick DeMarco, I think. But we got Oluwale in there now, just because he looks like a very good card. I mean, bruising back chem might come in a bit handy later on when we change our running back because a lot of the good ones do have bruising back chem okay? for now we're keeping levy on bell just because there's no reason to replace him because if you compare his stats to any other running back he is up there he's he's a little bit worse than some of the very very expensive ones but compared to i was looking at um getting LaShawn mccoy the 90 rate of one he's he's just a little bit slower and that's it and to be honest, I very rarely get into the open field and get caught with him anyway. He's mainly there just to plunge up the middle or get me a few yards when I need it. So for the moment, he is very good. But if you do have a running back you want me to use or you think is very good, let me know down in the comments section of the video. Also got Vance McDonald, mainly for his run blocking. So if I'm doing sort of an inside zone run to the left, he'll be the tight end on the left-hand side. And as you can see, 85 strength. 86 run block that's actually a little bit better than some of my linemen um which is <laughs> very good for the team um he's also higher rated at fullback he's 90 rated at fullback but he doesn't get the chem boost which to be honest wouldn't mean that much considering we aren't using the bruising back chem but i might put my backup fullback actually thinking about it but anyway Vance McDonald is in there. We did the sets for this guy, so we're very, very slowly working our way towards getting a ma um, Man of the Month, I think it's called, Player of the Month set, so we can get that Josh Norman as well after we've grinded through quite a lot of Ultimate Seasons, So or Super Bowls now, actually. They're not the seasons. We also got into Tahir Whitehead and Bob Sanders, and Tahir Whitehead got him in mainly for the chem to boost uh, Teddy Bruschi up to a 95, but he is good. Uh, he shouldn't be a left outside backer but considering he is those stats are pretty damn good i mean he's got very good tackling very good play rec very good block shed he's just a good player to be honest uh hip power could be a little bit higher and his strength could be a little bit higher as well but considering i use him in coverage quite a lot he's he's good in coverage considering he actually is a middle linebacker in real life and also bob sanders i was a bit reluctant thinking about picking him up but i was convinced to pick him up because a few people did recommend him to me and he goes up to a 92 with the chems as well the only reason i didn't want to pick him up is because of his height he's only five foot eight compared to loy malloy who's six foot and then we have morgan burnett who's six one and i thought that that height really could put him as a disadvantage but he's got 88 zone 94 hit power and as you can see compared to loy malloy he's better at near enough everything he's only worse at tackling so for me, that's a huge bonus. I'm hoping his height doesn't come into account too much, but you know we'll see that in the games in later in the episode. But what I'm going to say now, guys, if you do enjoy this series, drop a like on the video. You know the target is 16 likes, considering it's episode 16. 
and also subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to see more videos like this um we also did get rid of our elite coach considering he was going for 100k at the time i thought it was worth getting rid of him because the only player he actually got operating was mel blunt to 93 um i think it's totally worth getting 100k extra in the bank for that to be honest um i don't know what you guys would have done but for me definitely worth it um and we got the elite player pack for only 100 points unfortunately i can't spend any money on that i mean you wouldn't get anyone good anyway you get an 85 rated elite but that's quite tempting to do um also what i'm going to show uh considering it's ultimate freeze we do get a lot of the freeze collectibles which i have been stacking up um or i had been stacking up should i say i traded them in see we still got a few there actually but i did trade them in and we got this present here i'm not sure what one this is um it says an ultimate freeze gift it turns into a pack um, I'm not sure what one this is. I'm tempted to trade it in and try and get another one, but it is risk and reward with these. I don't think anyone knows what they are. By the colours, I mean, they doesn't give anything away to me whatsoever. Nothing about that gives anything away. So let me know if I should trade in the gift, because you can trade the gift in with three other collectibles. We have quite a few collectibles there, as you can see. I could work towards getting another gift, maybe, but we have quite a lot of collectibles there that I can put into getting another gift or re-roll this one twice let me know down in the comments what you think i should do anyway but also all my freeze is out at the moment and we have some very good players i know you guys probably have seen this before but i'm just going to go through some of the players that i'm thinking about getting for the series so obviously there is matthew stafford which i'm sure a hell of a lot of you or pretty much every one of you would have worked out who i wanted would be matthew stafford uh, considering I pretty much always use his cards just because he is my favorite player in the NFL at the moment finally not underrated people are finally starting to actually rate him but there he is there that card looks very of 178k it was 230k the other day so it's slowly coming down hopefully it'll come down to a, around about 100k after all my freeze is done and that's when I'll pick him up the key to picking up players is if you wait until they don't need to be in sets, their price drops massively. So you have to do it on the exact day the set stops coming out or the day after, because then he'll be out of packs and there'll be less on the market. So you have to get it exactly in that sweet spot to get him for a good price. But those stats, as you can see, I'll compare him to the Stafford we actually have at the moment. He's got the same chemistry, the deep threat, so he'll get a good boost, I think. He also has the Ultima Freeze offense. I probably won't ever get round to filling out that one because you need five players and I haven't got any at the moment. But as you can see, he's quicker, better awareness, which doesn't mean too much because you're controlling him. Better throw power by a few, accuracy short by a few, medium and deep by a few. Way better play action and throw on the run, which will come in huge if I start. Because I don't use play action plays mainly because his play action is so low and if they're blitzing, it never works. So hopefully, once I get the upgrade for him, I'll be able to do more play-action plays and mix up my game a bit. But for 178k, that's not a bad deal. I mean, if he goes if he goes down to 120-ish, I'll definitely get him. But let me know who you are thinking of getting, or who you want to get from this set. If you have the coins, or maybe you don't have the coins. If you did have the coins, who you want to get from this set. Let me know in the comments as well. Once again, can't know anything on the video that I say as per usual but i think for this episode there isn't too much to talk about considering the game um if you want me to upload two of these a week also let me know and follow me on twitter and let me know because i do twitter updates with this series to tell you what guys what i'm doing for the series and things like that but for now i'm going to cut off this bit of the episode here we're going to jump into some gameplay i think there'll be two or three games for you guys so hopefully that you do enjoy that and yeah i'll just get straight into them so we are actually going to have three games in today's episode because the team was just playing so well i thought i'd get three games in and as you can see we're coming up against someone who is quite a lot lower rated than us but that doesn't necessarily mean too much in the game like if someone has a better scheme than you they're going to end up beating you no matter what team they have so i didn't want to let my guard down and i wanted to come out and hopefully force this guy into throwing a pick or something and there 
Should have been a pick, but for some reason, I'm not sure who, exactly who it was, my cornerback just decided he's not going to try and go for the pick whatsoever, and he makes some very nice throws in this, considering he had Nick Foles, he was making some very, very good throws. Um, as you can see, he had a nice roll out there, he made some nice reads, he waited for me to gamble on the, the I think it was a route to the flats, or just an out route, I gambled on it and he made me pay for that. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm just trying to make him not get any yards. He throws on the run and unfortunately for him, throws it straight to our new pickup, Bob Sanders, who looks absolutely tiny, which is hilarious. But on the first drive he has to defend against, he gets us a pick six. So you can't ask for anything better than that from a new pickup in the team. To be honest, he didn't make too much of an impact after that, but I think where he did make an impact, he did a very good job. For example, a pick six there, and he did make some big tackles for the team. But my opponent's trying to run the ball, and this team's run defense is ridiculous. I don't get run on very much, as you can see. Any run play he picks doesn't tend to do that well, and we get a nice sack there, force him to I think fourth and yeah fourth and seventeen, and he's had enough at that point. So first game, nice easy win. We didn't even have an offensive play, and we ended up winning seven nil. And my second opponent here, once again, similar sort of team. Just a full elite team, and you think the game's been out for so long now, people would have very good teams. But, I mean, I guess they aren't following a series like this to get the tips on how to get the better teams. But my opponent, as you can see, trying to run, tries to spin move for some unknown reason. Um, and I force him to fourth down on his first offensive possession, so he, he punts it. Which is very strange to see, you very rarely see anybody ever punt the ball nowadays, but he does. Punts it straight to Antonio Brown and our first offensive drive of the episode. I'm hoping it can come up with some points because um, I'm trying to get used to this staff a bit. I tried to throw it a second earlier then and with the lag, unfortunately, Cam Chancellor broke the route. Uh, he jumped the route even, sorry. And unfortunately, ended up getting a pick. But we do force him to fourth down yet again. And as you can see on the screen there, it actually says fake punt. So... I don't know if that's that's a glitch in the game or something, but it gave away the fact it was a fake punt. I mean, even if it is a fake punt, the, considering the punter he had and the players he had, I knew my players were going to be able to stop a fake punt. He's going to lob it over there, and we get a pick anyway. I think that's Madison getting the pick there. But the way the fake punt's done this year, they just the way the receivers run the routes is just terrible. So, unfortunately for him, it doesn't come off. Um, on the next play, I see Antonio Brown's going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, and look at that separation. Once he's clean gone, he was so far ahead of my opponent's quarterback there, um, cornerback there. He was like they jumped for the ball together, and then he was about 15 yards difference. Because that's the sort of difference having a really good player can make. Like obviously, it does make it easier for you to win games if you have the better players, but that isn't the sole reason you'll win or lose games. So we got an interception off a Nick Foles throw and my opponent he was very strange some plays he'd throw absolute dots and other plays he'd panic and he wouldn't and we throw it to Le'Veon Bell here should be a touchdown for some reason he's decides to stop mid stride no idea why and forces us to the fourth yard line we're trying to punch it in and luckily for us here we do punch it in I think that was very very close and that would have forced us to a fourth and goal and he was stopping the quarterback sneak each time which is why I tried something different there he should have got a touchdown there, not exactly sure why. Like I said, the game, game has been a little bit glitchy at the moment. Um, he tried a spin move, which I think brought him back a few pixels or something, and my player just made the tackle, brought him down when he was clean through. And as you, like here, he's finding absolute dots on this drive. He's drove on me so quickly down the whole field. Play action plays, wasn't gambling on it. I should have gambled on that. I knew he was going to throw it there, but unfortunately, my user game is not good enough for that. And he does end up just punching it straight into the end zone to make it a one possession game. I did miss my extra points on the last touchdown I got as well, which really didn't help because it does put me in a bit of a panicky position. But I know I can score against him on pretty much every offensive drive I get. At worst case scenario, a field goal. But I'm just going to take some nice check downs here and there. Dallas Clark, this is why I have him in the team, just because of how good he is at receiving. Once again, Check down to the outside. We still have all three of our timeouts. I'm going to use one here. So we have two timeouts, 22 seconds. I know we can get into the end zone or we're in field goal range. It's not the worst thing in the world. That makes it a two possession game. And I was going to go out of bounds there purposely, but I thought I'll try and pick up a few extra yards. 
He bites on that. We do get the extra yards, but he decides to quit because he knows we're going to score on him again and there's no way he can stop our offense. So two games, two wins for the team at this point. And going into the final game here, we have our three best players, as you can see, as per usual there. And my opponent did have a good team this time. He had a 90-odd rated team, I have to say. A lot of his players were high rated. But for us, once again, the, the seeing ratings of players doesn't panic me. If anything, they have, if they have lower rated players... I think they're a better player, so it's going to be a harder game because they don't rely on the high-rated players to get them wins and up through the ranks. So, coming up against this guy here, I wasn't too panicked. I can see on the left-hand side, I'm going to get a one-on-one -on -one with Antonio Brown. I'm holding in the pocket for a second. My line does a phenomenal job, and unfortunately, Antonio Brown decides to pat it away. I think potentially he could have come up with that catch, considering the cornerback was a, f a foot or so off of him but he decides to pad it away we do pick up the first down anyway and i'm going to keep trying to drive down the field once again using dallas clark as often as possible i mean i'm starting to use my receivers a hell of a lot more now considering i have the higher rated ones but dallas clark is still such an integral part of my offense like, i think he's the best receiving tight end in the game at the moment um eric abron the 90 rated card very tempted to pick him up but i mean dallas like, i can't replace him just how well he's playing and when you have receivers this high rated, they're going to play, make plays like that. Madison, on a simple route over the middle, manages to get a touchdown from what should be just maybe even just a first down gain or something like that. But, you know, fair play to him for doing that. And my opponent didn't give up. I mean, it is still only the first quarter, but a lot of people give up at that point. He tries to run the ball straight out the middle and we're smashing that strip button and we do get a fumble and we get the recovery. He did try and pause it, but there was no challenge option, so it was a definite fumble. And at this point, all he needs to do is try and punch it into the end zone one more time, and he'll be broken. You can tell if someone goes for a challenge play, they are pretty annoyed, and they feel hard done by. So if they get scored on, that's usually the end of the game for them. We see some nice separation on the left. Antonio Brown does do a little glitchy play there, and gets into the end zone. And my opponent, unfortunately, from a gameplay perspective, didn't want anything else to do with the game and ends up quitting on this play so hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and we get three games in this one so drop a like on it for that let's try and get the 16 like target also if you made it this far hashtag survivor in the comments subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys soon for another episode of my madden 17 road to glory